Chris Weston's at IG Markets, uh, and let's go there now. Good morning to you, Chris. Uh, well, certainly it's all about sort of the stimulus response to what's uh, been going on in Europe, but now in the United States. Um, what do you make of sort of the Asian trade, the build-up now to what's a key week and really coming down to Thursday in the Fed? Yeah, I think we're just seeing a little bit of pause for thought. Clearly, the uh, Japanese GDP print hasn't helped matters at all. I mean, it's up 0.7 of a percent. Market's expecting a little bit more. The Nikkei, uh, as you'd expect, down about 0.3 of a percent last time I checked. So clearly, that's taken a bit of a wind out of the sails. And of course, then, um, you know, we had a, a really strong rally uh, towards the back end. Oh, so I suppose a quite a strong rally in the S&P towards the back end of the session. And I think most of that was really premised on on this China infrastructure projects, which are going to be coming out to the tune of about 150 billion US dollars. Uh, so it'd be getting interesting to see how the China market comes on today because obviously that was out the blocks on Friday and I think that closed up about 3.7% on the, on, the, on the composite. So I think it's a, an interesting one but everyone's going to be focusing on, the, everyone has been focusing on the industrial production numbers that came out on Sunday, 8.9%. Yeah, everyone's saying well we're we seeing signs of stabilisation that we wanted to see going into the third quarter uh, and that doesn't seem to be materialising just yet um, and, and hopefully we're going to see that going into the fourth quarter but people saying now that the 8% consensus uh, 2012 final target is uh, looking a little bit at, at threat at the moment so you know the infrastructure project side of things is very good uh, I think it's about a quarter of the size of the, the one that the stimulus project that, that they announced in 2009-2010 hopefully that uh, will lift the market today but I think you know a bit of pause for thought S&P futures and Dow futures down a little bit today it's about a bit of profit taking coming through there but clearly this is a market where I think people are looking to buy the dips and uh, you know we're looking very closely at that institutional benchmark the S&P as we always do but I think what's happening there, you've got this clear pain trade that's going on. And, you know, 11% of hedge funds recently suggesting they were underperforming the S&P. No one's believed in this rally the whole way up. Uh, and you've got to be in the market now. You've got to be t participating in this rally. Otherwise, you're going back to clients uh, with egg on your face. And, and so people are reluctantly going to have to start taking part in this, uh, in this rally. But we're just pausing for thought at the moment. So clearly that Japanese GDP print is really not helping the, uh, the overall market there. Chris, Chinese trade numbers, I guess that's important for the Australian dollar. Um, you talked about the stimulus package out of China. That's what they can do in terms of stimulating the kind of activity there, rails, con uh, construction of rails and roads and the rest. But mm. these numbers coming out today, perhaps they show more of uh, what they can't control. And that's what's, what's happening across the rest of the world. When you get export numbers, that's going to be key, isn't it? They, they can't control demand in Europe and the United States and elsewhere. That's exactly right. And I mean, if you look, everyone was focusing very clearly on the export number at 1% last month. This is expected to be just over 2%. So clearly, I mean, it's the same thematic that you look across the rest of Asia, Taiwan, Korea, they've all, they're experiencing you know, very low external demand coming through. And if you look at Europe, I mean, from, from a pure GDP uh, perspective at the moment, the consensus is we're looking for about 0.5% for the full year. So clearly that external demand is not helping Asia. Uh, I think if we get a, a good number today, I mean, in terms of the export numbers, above 2.5%, would be uh, would be very good for the Australian dollar. Uh, I think people are still looking to sell the rallies there, but mainly against uh, against the crosses is, is generally the best way to play. Given that there's a real chance that we're going to get QE3 at the end of the week, which will obviously dilute the US dollar. Um, so yeah, I think we're looking at that external demand. Uh, I think anything less than you know two percent, or we get back to the sort of one percent, even in contractionary territory, that would be very very bad for the for the Aussie dollar. And you know we're going to head uh, down to that sort of 103 level today. Yeah, well, this is the thing as well, just uh, as well, that this idea of uh, the constitutionality of uh, the bailout funds back into Europe, uh, the, you know, the whole kind of balance that, that's likely to be struck on that one. Is, is it a given that the court is going to come down, you know, on, on the side of saying this, this passes muster? Well, I hope so. Uh, I mean, Reuters are saying that they're, amongst all their sort of top lawyers that they've, they've come out and, and, and interviewed, that they see a pretty much a zero probability of it going through. Probably every single one of their lawyers, the 20 lawyers that they've come out and suggested uh, and interviewed, all see this being passed. Uh, Morgan Stanley is one of the investment banks who, who I looked at, and they said that they, they see it as more as a 40% probability. So on that, on that grounds, there could be a bit of a hiccup. Uh, even if they do vote no, I think there's, there's, there's mechanisms around it which means it's not the worst case scenario. That, but uh, you know, obviously risk assets will fall pretty heavily after that announcement. But I think, I mean, if a balance of probability, you're going to say this is going to go for OK. Even though De Spiegel over the weekend, the German newspaper said that 54% of, of all Germans who are polled want to see a no vote. So clearly public sentiment is urging on the side of let's, let's, not, let's not, you know, guarantee these funds going forward. But I think this is probably... 
this is an interesting situation which we hope could cause some relief. I mean, the, on the same day we've also got the Dutch elections, and you know that that could be also another interesting scenario playing through. But for me, the big the big situation will be what happens around QE3 or, uh, after, or on, the, on the after date, uh, and I think people will, will, will make sure that the dollar is is well bid up until that time. I think. Most of the investment banks that I've seen are now telling their clients that we are likely to see an expansion of the Fed's balance sheet. A change of language is now a complete given. Uh, we are going to see them, or the market's fully expecting them to, to change the language to late 2015 uh, for, the, for the Fed's run, funds rate. But uh, it's a question now is, do we get an expansion of the balance sheet through mortgage-backed security purchases and perhaps treasury purchases as well. I think most of them are saying we're going to get a 500 billion uh, US dollar plus type package coming through. Whether that creates jobs longer term is, is still very debatable. I think Goldman Sachs said that they see 600 billion worth of stimulus create um, lowering the unemployment rate by 0.1 of a percent. But uh, <laughs> you know, it's, uh, I think that's going to be the trade. So hopefully we're going to get this passed. That will keep the euro supported. I think we're just seeing a bit of profit taking today after a strong run up on Friday. And then it's all about what happens with the dollar, which has broken through the August uptrend and looks like it could go lower over time now. Chris, got to leave it there. Thank you so much. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Chris. That's uh, Chris Weston at RG Markets. In